Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. A group of researchers at Japan's Saitama University have successfully captured plants communicating and warning others about potential dangers in real time. The team was able to genetically alter the plants to fluoresce green after detecting calcium ions, which serve as an indicator of stress. The experiment consisted of two groups of plants. One group would be given a stress indicator, like a caterpillar crawling across its leaves and a control group of plants with no caterpillars. For the first time ever, the team was able to capture these warning signals on video, showing the plants attacked by the caterpillars, warning plants across the room of impending danger. So we've already got these uh, group of scientists that are working on using AI to help us communicate with animals. And now we've got proof that plants communicate back and forth. So they're gonna tell us we can't eat animals because they're talking creatures. And we can't eat plants because they're talking creatures. And this is how they're going to get us to all eat bugs. This is the delt print. Some think this human footprint right here is fake, carved. Take a good look at it. Does that look carved to you? What's amazing about it is, is that there is a dinosaur footprint superimposed over it in the same strata. Dinosaurs are supposedly died out 66 million years ago, which means this print, this stone, this artifact should not exist. But it does. Further proof of a worldwide flood where dinosaur and humans once roamed at the same time. I'm 100% convinced at this point that humans and dinosaurs walked the earth at the same time. Yo, listen to this. We are living in a villain's world, and they designed it perfectly. Mm -hmm. We eat the food they give us. Poison. Us vote for one of two people that they tell us yeah. to and watch the movies that they show. They take our attention as soon as we reach age five and they never give it back. We go to school for eight hours a day learning what they want us to. They scold us mm. until we obey and then they praise us when we do. They make us form a habit of waking up and spending our entire day in a building that we wouldn't choose so that when we get older we are willing to do the same. Following orders becomes comfortable when we spend our childhood doing what we're told. So when we're older we hesitate to stray outside the norm. They tell us that we should do anything we can to attend a university because if we don't we will fail they manipulate us into financial dependency at a young age so that we stay liable to the system they've given us a currency that only has value because they say it does and we receive it by working at a business that they own their millions become billions while the rest of us are forced to sacrifice price our time for minuscule fraction of what our work gains for them wake up to reality that's a great psa I uh, don't disagree with anything she's saying there. Uh, I have a pretty good feeling that my audience is already aware of all this. Um, but still, some things need to be said and definitely need to be heard. And that's what I picture every time someone talks about the pole shift happening. I don't think there's going to be anywhere for us to run and hide. It's a good example of how quickly things could be covered up. Give some credibility to the mud flood theory. I don't know about this. Some of that looks pretty CGI heavy. Um, I can't get behind that being legitimate footage. The door closed. Keep the door closed. Whoa! Right there. Whoa! What? I want to know where the woman went that went through the door. <laughs> Man, that's um, keeping the door closed didn't help very much, did it? I had to make a video on this right now. It could not wait. You remember how India just landed on the moon? Um, like last month, Japan said we want to get in on that too. Watch this. Here, I'll let you watch it again. They said, India, you made it look easy. We're going to do it too. They sure did make it look easy, didn't they? Are you saying America can't do this?
play the song. Get you all geared up, ready to go. Hold on, that's not what it looked like, Japan. Why are you lying to us? And they were nice enough to take pictures of the lunar surface for us. You know, I have some friends with telescopes. Looks a lot different like that through a telescope. There's that pesky technology that we lost in the 60s. It's completely destroyed it. Hard to retrieve it. I see why. I see why. Look at how we just fall down. Come on. You know, I could make something that looks better than that on my computer sitting here in my bedroom. I have the software, I just don't have the knowledge on how to run it. That's something I'm currently learning. You know, someone with the knowledge of how to do it, of how to run the software, could build a model, a 3D model of a craft, a 3D model of the lunar surface, and give us something that actually looks legitimate, but instead they keep giving us this super fake looking stuff and trying to convince us that it's real. It doesn't make any sense. You'd think they would put in some effort. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. Wow, look at that for a grand age. Yeah. It's locked. <laughs> Yeah, before we check all the other entrances, look at this door. Should we ring the bell? No, that's too old school. No, I don't. Know. That's some knockers, isn't it, Steve? That's yeah. a right pair of knockers. So. Ah, uh, really? I think it's the back cave, lads. Yeah. Oh, lads. There's a spoiled staircase that goes up. No way. Yeah. Yes, way. Do you want me to go up there first to have a look? Or... But yeah, look at this. So this is... This is an old part. Yeah, there, look. Yeah. Um, do we need to close it, Steve? Okay. Right, Ray's going up first, which means he'll go. Oh, it's boarded up up there. Right, do you want me to go first, Ray? Yeah, watch the synths as well. Oh, there's another room through there, fading and fucking else. You seen the hole in the wall, Steve? What? Is it open? <laughs> no way! Oh my god! There's a camera on the wall over there. Straight ahead. Pointing at it. We're just... Can you look at those paintings? No way. Oh my god. Look at the size of that. You guys. <laughs> So that's supposed to be an abandoned Rothschild mansion. Pretty fascinating to see what kind of stuff they left behind. If I remember, because I'm famously bad at remembering to do this, if I remember, I will put the link to that video in the description of this video so you can go to TikTok yourself and watch all the consecutive parts of that. Back in the day, it used to cost 50000 Who knows how much it costs now? <laughs> if you ever notice a rapper first, first, everything's fine. Then something goes wrong. They get out of line, they end up in jail, they come back looking totally different. And it's up to us if we're going to let them play in our face or if we're going to go, hmm, that ain't him. And then speaking of they clone Tyrone, isn't Jamie Foxx part of that 
He came out looking. They were like, "Where's the tattoo?" Where's his tattoo on the back of his head? Um, it, and I, they, they showed a picture of him. He I'm was like, in well, like McDonald's or Wendy's or yeah. some damn where. It looked like the clone was just testing himself out. Like, yeah, all right, I'm out. Let's see what's going on. I'm happy to be in the world. It seemed like the clone was literally testing himself out. But my thing is, where was the tattoo in the back of his head? And it just makes you wonder, like, do they do this shit to, like, play with us, to, like, see if we know, to see if we're still dumb, to see how many of us are dumb, to see how many of us are brainwashed so they can know how many more to continue to brainwash? I don't think they're cloning people out here. Um, I think they have the technology to do it, but I don't think it works that way. I don't think that, I think they would have to have known that they needed to clone this celebrity far enough in the past that they would have to grow them from birth uh, to be an identical copy. I could be completely wrong. I don't know how cloning works. I know that they're messing with it, so who knows, but I don't think they're out here cloning celebrities and stuff. I I think that's just conspiracy. I do think they're controlling celebrities. That's a different thing. They don't have any pictures of Earth, but somehow we have a picture of Pluto from a spaceship that is going 60,000 miles an hour, whizzing by it and catches this crystal clear full shot of Pluto, which happens to have what they call a desert or whatever that looks like the dog Pluto. Both of these were made in the same year. Pluto the dog from Disney and Pluto the planet was named. I don't know, is that just a coincidence? Maybe Pluto was a popular name that year, huh? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, they got a recent, another picture of Pluto. Look at that. Now, am I lying? Is that a picture of Pluto? Or is that the guy, Bob, uh, Bob, whatever, the painting guy that, that paints, you know? Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Is that a Bob Ross palette? Or is that a picture of Pluto? Which one is it? I could be tricking you like I did with the ducks. Uh, I would say that's supposed to be Pluto. It is Pluto. That's supposedly. But look at that stupid. Thing. <laughs> look, you're very good. You're good. You're you're uh, you are um, gonna face a hard reality today, but a great reality because once you understand that we're not on a spinning, wobbling space back flying through an infinite, godless universe, life is better. That does look suspicious. The uh, first image with the image of Pluto, the dog drawn over it. If you move the ears to where my eyes show me on the. Pluto planet, the ear should be located, it even would match up even more accurately with the picture of the dog superimposed over the top of it. As of 2024, many are familiar with the infamous Black Knight satellite, but most haven't heard the decoded transmission that allegedly came from the object. Our home is Epsilon Vodas, which is a double star. We live on the sixth planet of seven, coming from the sun which is the larger of the two. Our sixth planet has one moon. Our fourth planet has three. Our first and third planets each have one. Our probe is in the position of Arcturus, known in our maps. Only in 1960 did America mainstream media confirm it. On February 11th of that same year, the Defense Department finally acknowledged the existence of the Black Knight satellite. By then, America had completely forgotten about the decoded transmission sent to us from another star system by an advanced race of aliens. I don't believe that that is the actual data transmission coming off the Black Knight satellite. If that was the actual data transmission coming off of it, then everyone would be aware of it. If they printed that in the paper back in 1960s, and they may have, I wasn't around back then, but I feel like that would be common knowledge. Hey, we received this radio transmission from this satellite that's orbiting our planet back in the 60s, and it give us actual location of where it supposedly came from. I feel like that would be common knowledge if it was reported onto the paper. We just got done doing a live presentation on giants, and people have been asking, is it really true that there were giant humans before and after the flood? Well, we look at the fossil record, what do we find? Horse tails that are normally 30 inches tall are 100 feet tall. How about a beaver? Look at that, it's a three foot beaver. Before the flood, they were eight feet long. Humans? How about this one? This is in the fossil record, the footprint to a nine foot human. What else we got? How about big monkeys? You like a 10 foot monkey in the fossil record? Gigantopithecus. I could go on. So yes, there were giant animals, there were giant plants and even giant insects. Were there giant humans? Genesis says there were giants on the earth in those days. You like this kind of stuff? 
hit the follow button wherever it may be. We'll have more for you very shortly. Take care. Again, I'm convinced that giants are real, were real. I don't think that we still have them now. If we do, I think they're in hiding. Yeah, I, I think that we used to have giants and that they slowly over time all died. 70% of ancient artifacts that exist that connect to the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, I should say, the ancient people of Kemet, really, the ancient Sumerians from Mesopotamia, the ancient people throughout Turkey and Syria and all these places, and even down into the, the parts of the Americas and South America, which used to be Mesoamerica, most of them have a depiction of the Pleiadian star system etched into the actual stone or scripture or writing or artwork or whatever's been left behind. And then you look at the Ab originals their verbal handed down history for thousands of years i went for a walk about in australia about maybe four years ago documented it's online they say that they were seated on this planet by the pleiadians and then they showed me pleiadian hieroglyphs which i took a lot of documentation of uh, out there in the wilderness on the walkabout and these glyphs have never been deciphered by anybody on earth as to date and we know that because of the patina inside the glyphs you can date the age of when they approximately were carved it comes out to be about five thousand years it's interesting to see that there's another group out there that is very unlikely influenced by any outside media or anything like that. I mean, they're living out in the, in the middle of the wilderness, and they've got the same stories that we keep seeing come up over and over again, that we were put here by an alien race or that we were altered by an alien race many, many years ago, and that's how we became human. So, very interesting. Look at this old Italian Bible depicts the flat earth in the book of Genesis. You have the firmament, which is the solid glass dome, Genesis 1 verse 7. You have the flat circular earth, Isaiah 40 verse 22. You have the pillars of the earth underneath, 1 Samuel 2 verse 8. You have the sun, the moon, and the stars all inside of our atmosphere in the firmament. You have the waters above the firmament, Genesis 1-7 again. All the ancient civilizations had the same exact depiction of the universe. A flat stationary earth with a firmament over top, waters above, and a sun, moon, and stars inside of our firmament. And then Satan came along with NASA and deceived everyone to believe in this fake ball that takes us away from the truth that is in God's word, in the scriptures. Yet if we go to the founder of NASA's gravestone, Werner von Braun, look what he has on it. Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Right? These organizations know that we live under the firmament dome. Which is why all these launches look like this. They go up and come back down. Due to mass deception, all this information has been lost over time. Which is why I've spent a lot of time going ahead and compiling all this information for you guys in the True Earth book. You can go download it right now in my profile. The Bible is the truth. We are made to have a relationship with God. Seek Him. Don't forget to like and follow. I'll see you in the next one. I get some comments, people saying, why do you keep putting flat earth stuff in there if you don't believe in it? Because I'm doing research, man. Just like anybody, I'm trying to find out what the truth is. I don't believe in a flat earth. I don't believe in NASA. I don't believe anything that they tell me. So if they're the ones out there that's purporting the uh, globe earth model, then I'm going to keep looking into it because they're a bunch of liars. There are sightings in all parts of the world, including water-based sightings, USOs, unidentified submersible objects. We've had to modify the term UFO because in fact they have what's known as transmedium properties. They can seamlessly move from air into water and back again. They can clearly fly in space. The Tic Tac UFO came down from space, descended 80,000 feet in a matter of seconds. They had been seeing things going in and out of the water and flying out from space down to above the ocean for weeks at a time. I mean, there are countless cases of things that are seen flying into and out of the ocean. There are the navies of pretty much every major superpower in the world have these cases, pretty dramatic incidents of things that they have encountered under the water. Mr. Favor, you believe that you witnessed an additional object under the water in relation to your encounter? There was something there to cause the white water, and when we turned around, it was gone, so there was something there that obviously moved. I spoke to Bob McGuire, who's written about uh, UAP and UFOs, and he 
reported that he'd been on a Navy submarine and something flew by and what he said was the speed of sound, 700 miles an hour underwater, which is, it seems to be a physical impossibility given the resistance of water. He said other people saw it too. I mean, it's extraordinary. We've only actually explored about 5% of the ocean floor and the oceans make up over 70% of our planet. We're more of a water planet than we are anything else. So it's not completely out of the question that something could have evolved to the point of intelligence under the water without us knowing about it. The people at the highest level that I have ever had candid conversations, they always refer me to the movie The Abyss, that there is a present under the water and that UAP reside there, but it makes sense with how we see their craft being able to operate. A couple years back, I released a well-known video, the USS Omaha, where you see in the thermal footage, like an egg-shaped UFO that appears to descend into the water. Flash, smart variant rain. This is corroborated by actual reports of people that were there, helicopter pilots that saw these UFOs going into the water. What I have now seen is that they are of prime importance to the United States Navy, which encounters them much more than we realize. I've gone through a number of these reports. Some of these things seem to have the ability to disable aircraft carrier, battle cruiser, the most powerful, potent things that if you're running the United States Navy, there's nothing more important than your aircraft carrier. And yet we have accounts that I consider credible by ex-Navy people saying, oh yes, for 30 minutes, we were unable to engage weapons. That is your single most important piece of military equipment in your inventory. And that thing gets disabled from an object that came rising out of the water, a glowing orange spherical whatever that's hovering over your ship. They observed a very large hundred yard sided red square uh, approach the base from the ocean and hover at low altitude over one of the launch facilities. Put it this way, if you were an alien civilization and you had a base on Earth, what would you like it to be that we pesky humans don't interfere with you? It's a great place to hide if you needed to. Let's say that you evolve in a solar system where there were occasionally events in the solar system that, you know, asteroids that hit your planet and caused mass destruction. Where's a good place to go that it didn't matter where an asteroid hit? Deep underground. I mean, go 10 or 12 miles underground and it would take a pretty big rock to change things. I think in the future that the research of UFO folks will be in the oceans because if you talk to folks in upper levels of government, they're pretty much convinced that there are bases, that there are enclaves of non-human intelligence under the ocean waves and that that is where we're going to find some answers. I feel like Bob Lazar's propulsion system that he explained in high detail on the Rogan podcast kind of explains how they're doing this because it makes perfect sense if they're if they're bending space-time around their craft to where they're able to just move through it fluidly and nothing can interfere with them. Radar doesn't work. Things can't bump into them or hit them because it, it just creates this force field around it, around their craft. Then wouldn't that force field also repel water and they'd be able to f just at great speeds fly right down into the ocean? It makes sense to me. Welcome to part two of Is Earth a Prison Planet? This is a new series I'm doing, guys. Things that keep me up at night. I don't know why I do this series. Seriously, it keeps me up at night. <laughs> like, I can't sleep. And if you missed part one, essentially I stumbled onto the Reddit thread Escaping from Prison Planet, where basically we're all trapped here and our energy is being harvested. So let's dive into afterlife tricks and scams. Yay! So basically what this theory proposes is this, this tunnel of light, right? That everybody talks about in these near death experiences. They die, they see this tunnel of life. They see loved ones, they see God, they see Jesus, they see Buddha, they see whoever. Yeah, it's all designed to trick us. According to the theory, this whole thing about karmic debt is just a design to entrap and enslave us. So the whole thing, right? When people are like, I had to go back so there's more to learn or people that feel like they have a special mission or whatever. Yeah, apparently it's just a trick. <laughs> so why all the tricks? Why do they have to deceive us? Well, it's because souls have an inherent right and free will. So they cannot force you to reincarnate. It has to be your choice. And apparently, according to this theory, all the new age beliefs of calling on spirit guides, guardian angels, your higher self, religious figures. Yeah, we're actually just damaging ourselves and humanity. I don't like this. And again, these are not my beliefs, okay? I tend to have more positive, optimistic beliefs, but the theory's freaking me out. Like the whole idea that religion is freaking designed and used, used to entrap us. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
like they call it religious programming, right? We're programmed to know right from wrong. We're programmed to feel guilt about our mistakes because nobody's perfect. We're programmed to understand there's gonna be a judgment that happens in all of this. All of this is so that while we're living, we're constantly fighting with each other. We're constantly, you know, creating this negative energy. We're feeling this guilt. We're having these, this low vibrational energy, all this, this chaos that's going on. And then when we die, we're like, hey, there's more I need to learn. And we just hop right back on the ride. I don't like this theory. The one thing I did like that I read, I did find this empowering message, at least a little bit. Uh, it says the real powerful infinite God creator who has nothing to do with any religious movement is already within you, right? Your source energy. We come from source energy. We were created by source energy. We are a piece of source energy. So I guess the whole purpose is don't give up your energy, right? Don't give up that free will. So the question is, why is this source, the creator, allowing this to happen? Why are we allowed to enslave animals on this earth, right? Like, why are we allowed to enslave other life forms? That's the whole question is, if we can do it to others, like, why couldn't it happen to us? And it all comes down to free will. Everything and everyone has free will. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. No, we're going to dive into some evidence. We're going to see some people that have past life regression experiences, uh, different people's psychedelic experiences and what they saw. We're gonna look at ancient scriptures and what it says about this. People that do remote viewing and how they've seen it. Like I said, these are not my beliefs. I tend to have beliefs that are a little bit more positive. I believe this universe is run by love. I believe the chaos, the order, it's all about balance. But this theory freaks the shit out of me. So I'm gonna keep making videos because if I'm gonna be scared, you're gonna be scared too. I will be following up with this guy just to let y'all know. So you should be able to see hit this uh, evidence that he's purported to have. This reminds me a lot of the Dolores Cannon stuff. I've got some videos of her coming up fairly soon. I don't know how I feel about all this reincarnation talk and coming back because you have uh, more lessons to learn so you're going to live another life, that kind of stuff, uh, which is kind of what Dolores Cannon proposes and and falls right in line with this, this dead planet theory. I do know that energy, according to science, uh, so take this with a grain of salt, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So that tells me that the energy that is inside of me that makes me who I am cannot be destroyed. So for that reason, I'm not really worried about death because I know I'll be somewhere doing something. And uh, I've always been somewhere doing something even before I entered into this existence. So for all of eternity, I have existed. And for all of eternity, I will exist. That's kind of the mentality that I have. And so for that reason, I'm not really worried about what happens after we die. That's the end of this video today. I hope that you liked the clips that I put together. I will be back tomorrow with another video, and I hope you come back to join me. Hope you have a great, safe, fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow.